Hello, everyone, and welcome to Indisputable. I am Sharon Reed filling in for the good doctor. Dr. Richie has the day off and joining us is the honorable mayor of Enfield, North Carolina, Mondell Robinson. Always a pleasure to be on with you, mayor. That's right. So So humble too. You're so humble, so full of knowledge. Um, I think we should get right into it, mayor. And we'll begin with Donald Trump. Repost meme threatening black poll workers. He is staying on brand, folks. Yep, that's him. Donald Trump is known for his online threats against judges, jurors, Democrats, lawmakers, veterans, soldiers, and more. But on Monday, he added black poll workers to the list. Among the things Trump reposted on his personal, I mean, social media site, Truth Social. Was a meme reading, start arresting the poll workers and watch how fast they tell you who told them to cheat. With a photo of two black people sitting at a table wearing masks, reading Biden Harris 2020. Uh, You might, you might want to think it's a coincidence. It's just a picture. It's just a picture. It's one that lives in his mind from a book called How to Be Racist. It is what it is. Okay. It is what it is. Let's show you more, shall we? Because uh, he didn't stop there. Reverse image search shows it has been posted by Dan Bongino and an anti-Biden Facebook group. There are allegations that the so-called poll workers are from Philadelphia and another claiming they were photographed in Detroit. The Philly was then reposted by far-right actor James Woods, who posted the photo alleging impropriety on November 5th, 2020. Sarah K. Burris. Of raw story with the details here. Uh, there goes the theory about it might have been a coincidence, right? You have to look for this in likely places. Questions of legitimacy of the photo in the meme. Raw story was unable to find the original source of the photo before the person named Will Holiday alleged it was a group of poll workers in Philly. Searching for Holiday's account shows that it was suspended and the post is no longer available online. Somehow, 45 found it. The account appears to be a source of several blog posts about conservative stories, such as one about a Kansas teacher, a North Carolina preacher, and blog posts about the photo of the poll workers. The photo is never confirmed by any mainstream news sites. And the same account at will underscore holiday one doesn't appear on other social media sites, including Truth Social. Now, after the 2020 election, Trump supporters, well, they targeted two Georgia poll workers. Remember, Ruby Friedman, her daughter, Shea Moss, accusing them of being on drugs, passing a thumb drive. They have since sued Rudy Giuliani and won. They might never see the money from it, however. They also testified before Congress about what it was like being targeted by MAGA and the entire MAGA world. Having their homes attacked and Trump supporters attempting vigilante justice by performing a citizen's arrest, folks. Here's a reminder of what Shea Moss went through. Watch. Those horrible things that they include threats? Yes, a, a lot of threats. Um, wishing death upon me. Um, telling me that you know I'm I'll be in jail with my mother and saying things like be glad it's 2020 and not 1920 That's, yeah. were, were a lot of these threats and and vile comments racist in nature A lot of them were racist a lot of them were just hateful um, but yes sir You hear that There can be no mistake about what the intended threat was, is that included one's mother. And oh, by the way, Ruby Friedman, she told her own story as well. Listen. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security. All because a group of people starting with number 45, and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay. 18,000 voters uh, having to do with uh, Ruby Friedman. That's, uh, she's a vote scammer, a professional vote scammer. And 
hustler. Their places of work, their homes should have been searched for evidence of ballots, for evidence of USB ports, for evidence of voter fraud. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American, not to target one, but he targeted me, Lady Ruby, a small business owner, a mother, a proud American citizen who stand up to help Fulton County run an election in the middle of the pandemic. All the things that Ruby Freeman listed there make her a hero, someone to be proud of. So I'm gonna state what is obvious to Ruby and her daughter Shay. They were targeted because they don't matter. Because they're black women in Georgia and they were symbols of something that some people didn't want to see. Quality, service, integrity, nope, that's not in the Donald Trump playbook. And Mayor, I I believe they better get something out of Rudy Giuliani. This is all that's left is to decide the money. Maybe I missed it, but that's all they're deciding. The money, because he was forced to admit it. He had no evidence to the contrary that he made this all up and targeted these women and slandered their good names. All that's left is the money. I hope they get it. What say you about all of this? So what's very rich about all of this, um, you know, we'll get to the the current situation, but the Ruby Freeman situation is I, I never paid attention to the part where you have a hustler, a known scammer who's been sued so many times for the past three or four decades talking about Donald Trump, calling these people who are real public servants scammers, hustlers with racial intent on them. She's not a known scammer. She's not a known hustler. She's not a vote hustler. That's what what you were actually on the phone trying to do. You literally were trying to vote hustle, Mr. Trump. I think the the disgusting part of this is we know exactly, he know exactly what he's doing with this new, uh, with this new picture of these two black people. The internet, the racist white conservative internet will go find these people and harass these people. And notice that they had to be from Detroit or Philly, two predominantly black suburban places and, and spaces where white people lost, Trump lost big, bigly. Uh, in this past election. So I think what happened, what we're seeing is Donald Trump trying to look for ways to make sure that his people remember that he didn't lose the election. It was people that were still in it. And oh, by the way, you should go get them because Donald Trump does not care about life, the cost of life, or what, what effects his lives have on other people. We see that already he's becoming, uh, he's already forgetting who uh, his his attorneys were Powell, for instance. He don't even know her. She was not his attorney now, even though she pled guilty to being his attorney and also lying in his scam, his vote scam in Georgia. I think what's, what's really scary, though, is people don't get their lives back. You can't be made whole once the president on national TV or in this in this manner call you a scammer. There will always be a segment of the population that believes what Donald Trump has said about uh, Rudy Freeman and these people as well, whenever their names are released. And for that, I mean, these people should be leveled up. They should have his security because we know how his people react to the harm, uh, especially at black people when Donald Trump said go. Wow. Yeah, Sidney Powell, you mentioned. Perhaps she'll unleash the Kraken when she testifies against 45. Okay, he'll remember her then, or at least the jury will. I agree with you, there's no way, there's no amount of money that can give Lady Freeman her name back, Shea Moss, her sense of security back. And I just wish that there would come a time where more people would move from the darkness to light. And I don't know, Mayor, I'll I'll end it with this and let you comment and have the last word. I wonder if what we're seeing with the Republicans in Congress who can't pick a leader, they just can't. And you can blame Democrats all you want, but aren't you supposed to pick your leader? You should have the numbers, but you don't because none of you has this respectful relationship with the other. 
Okay. And that's what happens when you rally around lies and prop them up when you know better and you know privately what you're saying. But I wonder if we're seeing just a little bit, a peak of daylight, if you will, where some, I hate the word moderate too. You're not moderate if you went along with a big lie. You are uh, something else that's anti-democracy. But do you think we're seeing a hint? People who said, no, we're not gonna let Jim Jordan be Speaker of the House, Republicans, who said, no, we're not gonna do it. Am I being naive, Mayor? I don't know if it's naivety or it may be more closely linked to the fact that what we're seeing is we do see this rebellious body that said Jim Jordan is not the one. However, it doesn't ring true. It rings very hollow since no one has called out Jim Jordan for sharing sharing, uh, private information from Congress with Trump when he was in the White House. What we do know, though, is these people that are speaking out against Jim Jordan are in districts that Biden won or that weren't for Democrats or very, very rarely uh, that they win their districts in 2022, and they know it's election season, and voters will not stand for the things that Jim Jordan would do as speaker. So I think right now what we do, what we don't see is something that's altruistic. We see something people looking out to save themselves, and we should acknowledge that because it's true that Trump put a, a put flame on the fire. But we saw these people come in. Patrick McHenry, who's the interim, came in with that 2010. I mean, that 20, that early Tea Party mess that we act like it was normal for these Tea Party Republicans to come in, but it led us to where we are. So Newt Gingrich, while he criticized Trump, has a role in this this, this dysfunction in that one part. of the major the, one of the major parties in this country. And, and as a Democrat, I don't find joy in the Republican Party being this dysfunctional because we are a democracy that depends on these two parties to be normal, to present ideas, especially if you're in the minority like us. We need both parties functioning properly, chasing our votes and working for us, because if not, then one party can easily forget us. And when the Republicans are playing this fragile game with our fragile democracy, we don't win. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And infighting is one thing, okay? Ask a progressive in the Democratic Party. It's a constant fight, but there's integrity, there is truth, there is a reckoning, there is a level, just a level of respect, Mayor, that has one side acknowledging, if not defeat, that we don't have the numbers and we want and respect our country. So we're gonna go ahead and move forward. We're gonna try something here. We're gonna hold our nose even. That's not what I see with the Republican side, I'm sorry. I hate to put it in terms of good versus evil, but there's an evil within that's taken over that party. And it's gonna take, can you believe that? We have to look for an example in Dick Cheney's daughter. It's gonna take self-sacrifice falling on your sword and knowing that you'll no longer be part of this club. But at least you'll be able, I guess, to look yourself in the mirror. We'll see. We'll move on. Neo Nazis protest refugees outside a Jewish center. First, watch this. I'm at the Jewish Community Hello, Center, where nice all of these worry. people are wearing masks as they protest. Because they're ashamed of what their out, beliefs man, are. Nazis are not that popular, sometimes they lose their jobs. And he just like said, not the oh, they're not. They're all hiding behind a mask. They're hiding behind masks. So brave. Here in the Pacific so Northwest, brave. we do not want non white immigration. Refugees, no, welcome. Hiding behind masks. Refugees, no, welcome. People like you try to get inspired from our jobs. Isn't that right? Hail to the white race. Are you a self hating white? Do you look like a self hating white? I'm Hispanic. Do you hate yourself? Do you like being Hispanic? Are you proud of being Hispanic, ma'am? Under all this stuff, like 
White power, bitch. Hiding their faces. Oh, faces. Just lovely humans hiding, hiding their faces. Why do you think the only power I saw in that footage was the power of buffoonery in numbers. Like it, it, buffoons needed to be together. Power to me means I step outside with a. My chest is poked out. I've got a smile on my face. I make eye contact. I feel powerful and proud. That's not what I saw. I saw $5 sunglasses, masks, some of them skeleton masks, just in time for that 31st of October holiday. I saw buffoonery and power in numbers buffoonery. Per the Missoula Current Saturday neo-Nazi rally outside Ar Shalom, a Missoula, Montana synagogue left residents upset, members of the Jewish community concerned. Hiding their faces, the group of white supremacists and neo-Nazis carried signs reading, diversity equals white genocide. Refugees, not welcome, and white lives matter. Montana Human Rights Network noted members of the National Socialist Movement were in attendance. Wonder how they knew. Based on other bystander video across the street were also counter protesters waving BLM flags. The current reported at least one member of the group was arrested after the rally moved downtown. The 46 year old male was taken into custody without incident, but he has since been cited and released. The man has been identified on social media as Larkin McIntyre, a Nazi from both of Washington. Later in the afternoon, the rally moved downtown near the county courthouse where a separate rally was taking place. The two rallies occurred peacefully until one member of the white supremacist group demonstrated what the Missoula Police Department described as a concerning escalation in behavior. Police spokesperson said in a statement on Monday, the individual's words and actions were deemed to have crossed the line from protected freedom of speech to potentially constituting rather, constituting disorderly conduct. After multiple verbal warnings from the lieutenant, the male did not comply. City of Missoula Police Department remains committed to upholding the rights of individuals to express their opinions and engage in peaceful protests while also ensuring public safety and enforcing the law when necessary. The Zoo Town Jews, a Missoula area Jewish community group, stated in an email to the current this. We are all aware that attacks on Jews around the world have stepped up since October 7th. We have heard of at least one recent incident in Missoula in which a Jewish man was accosted and subjected to a very frightening anti-Semitic rant by a stranger. Again, the Missoula current with the details here. Mayor, we've seen this unfortunately again and again. We respect freedom of speech, even hate speech is protected in our country. Please say this crossed the line. I, I heard a lot of men, and I want to know about the people at home who support them. And I don't just mean financially, Mayor, to put on your outfit, to stand with signs, bring your gear, megaphones, I guess in this case, organize. It requires time, energy, effort. They have to have support in order to be able to do this kind of undertaking. And maybe I'm focusing on the wrong thing, but I'm so curious as a single mom who has a list this long, taking care of my daughter, my elderly parent, 
who's here feed the homeless. Sure. There's things that I want to do on my list and I never get it done. I have no desire to join a group like this, Mayor, but I just wonder about all that goes into this kind of hate filled effort. Who are the people who support these people? I mean, I mean, maybe maybe the question is only flawed in that you're asking who are the people. We should be saying who are the systems or what are the systems, right? right? Because yeah. we have a country that is 400 and old when it comes to white supremacy. Um, I can't name a time when they took a black guy talking about white supremacy. And that is at the state of this country. And I, here's what I would say. Um, the idea that, you know, I, I, I would say I, I don't believe in all speech or all speech is equal. I think hate speech should be illegal. And then, and then what's beautiful about this is you hear this woman saying these people are hot in their face and their response is not. We're having our space because someone may attack us. We're having our face because we don't want to get fired. You're screaming white power at someone's place of worship. You're, if your protest is only about other people and their lives because they look different than you, then your protest is in support of hatred and racism. That's just what it is. Like I, 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 we don't. You've never seen anyone that supports the Black Lives Matter movement at a church protesting a church because people want to worship whatever they want to worship. The protest is usually somebody killing a black body. That's what the protest is about. The difference between what we see and what they see is systemic racism against us and them not believing that systemic racism supports them and elevates them to a point where they can stand in front of a Jewish synagogue and scream all this ridiculous in the face of a white person, they're screaming white power. If it's truly white power, uh, then the response would not be, do you hate yourself because you disagree with me? She's empowered because of white power to feel and believe whatever she wants to. If you notice, whenever the movement in the 60s said black power, they didn't stop there. They said all power to all people, mm -hmm. all power to all people. And people forget that that moniker. And even the most radical black people of our time was all about self-defense. The full name of the Black Panther Party was the Black Panther Party for self-defense. And what were they defending us against? They were defending the black community from cops running down on black people in the dark doing all types of harm. The ridiculousness that exists with this group of people who sit around, as you said, and spend tons of time planning these activities is the systems that they believe they are losing. Yet and still, if you look at the statistics, they still make up the majority of those who are cushioned and taken care of by the social safety net. They are the only people technically with the social safety net. White men need to stop crying about this idea or this attack on white male chauvinism. When we see people like Sarah Huckabee Sanders in Arkansas preventing or banning words, woke words, while people in her state are dying. Mm -hmm. One of the poorest states, black and brown people in that state can't even get health care because of her and they want to ban words. They don't care about free speech. They care about you agreeing with what they agree with. And when you don't, then you become the enemy of whatever sort. You're threatened. And you're so right. And thank you for the history lesson because it matters. The truth actually matters. We had a whole struggle between two great historical leaders of civil rights, Martin and Malcolm. And what were they arguing about? Peaceful non resistance versus we've got to protect ourselves, we've got to defend ourselves. That was the argument there. Okay, not about going out and attacking those who are different from you. This is indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed, and for Dr. Rashad Ritchie, the Honorable Mayor Mondale Robinson, Enfield, North Carolina, joins us. We need your voice, and we have it today. Stick around.
Okay, there you saw it. (laughs) This Karen on a flight upset that black people, her view, were served before her. I I don't want to make any excuse for the behavior, but I feel like somebody was served, okay? Perhaps a lot could have been at the terminal or when the flight first took off and they reached that altitude where they go, ding, and you know the carts are coming out and they're going to be serving people. Uh, Eventually, this big mouth Karen on a, we believe, jet blue flight, security got involved. Watch. Uh, everybody clap. Right. <laughs> Look at that. You get escorted by a black person. <laughs> <laughs> All that <laughs> you talking. Yeah. White power. <laughs> well, it's fitting. Karen was less loud on the way out, escorted by Look like brother, okay, mayor. I don't have any military training, and I only know what mostly I see in the movies. But I do watch a lot of documentaries. I watch air disasters too. You ever watch that? It's fascinating, riveting, uh, ooh, scary stuff. But here's where I wish, and I don't know if it can be done safely. There is that eject button. You just put her, strap her up with the, you know. Well, this is it. Mayor, fire pilots do it. And then when we're done with this nonsense, okay, and it's at your own risk, you didn't have to spew this nonsense for the rest of the people on the flight to hear, eject, and then we'll radio ahead. We'll let people know where Karen dropped down, and I hope it's a safe landing. And then they'll scoop her up and appropriate charges, whatever jurisdiction it is. And frankly, if it's a more favorable jurisdiction mayor, one that we can ensure she'll be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Then we'll we'll wait, and once the flight moves over that jurisdiction, EJ, that's my fantasy. How do you deal with these big mouths who make no sense, Mayor? And I, I want to resist the urge to say alcohol's involved here because this is just a a big mouth, Karen. Yeah, and I mean, I mean my grandmother used to say, um, and not just her, a lot of older people that I grew up listening to, uh, a drunk mouth is a sober mind. So you you get drunk enough to say what you really feel. So I mm. think this idea, I mean, and, and to to back up my grandmother and all of her wisdom, um, there were studies in 2017 when Trump was right fresh president uh, that 55 percent of white Americans believe that white Americans are discriminated against, and her behavior shows just that. I think here's the, here's the tacky part of this woman's behavior. Uh, Yes, you're being discriminated against, discriminated against, but it's not because of your race. It's because you're already drunk. So we're discriminated mm. against drunk people on planes because drunk people on planes can kill people. You disturb, you disturb the order that's necessary to keep that iron bird in the sky. And we don't need a person like you who is too drunk to recognize that, hey, I want more alcohol, even though I'm sloppy right now. I'm I'm very sloppy and at risk of never being able to fly again, which is I'm certain is the case after this video and after she was escorted off. Here's the irony, though. I think the problem with your wonderful solution of you know a parachuted uh, eject button is it gives her an easy pass, so she's not forced to walk down that long hall of shame as she's walked off that plane by a black body. She's not forced to sit there and in the dumbness that's in this environment that she created by being so drunk. And wanting more drunk, <laughs> like she was searching for more drunk, and these and these people wouldn't see it, and it's rightfully so. This is why these people are trained to recognize when there's going to be a problem, and she showed exactly what happens when one person has one too many drinks. Uh, I remember those days on planes where people were allowed to smoke and also drink in all carts and all um all the time as much as they wanted to, and it was a completely different experience. So uh, I don't, I'm not nostalgic about the day where people had as much alcohol or smoke as they want on planes. And this this woman, this Karen, is exactly why. Yeah, she is. And I okay, Mayor, the eject um, fantasy will never come to fruition. Right? It's just not. It's not practical. I would. I wouldn't mind if, and I'm not advocating for violence, but was it airplane or soul plane where they lined up and they had a had a go at her? 
Okay, and snap out of it. Leslie Nielsen, right? Soul Plane, I know they said we're ready, let's ready to roll. Okay, however it went. Something where we collectively put a Karen in her place and then go back to fellowship with one another. Maybe you're going a romantic, a, a romantic getaway. But <laughs> Leslie Nielsen, Soul Plane, something like that seems in order. Um, we're gonna let her have that. They scored her right off the plane. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You are your friend. Back off! I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Are you sorry for what you did to me? Are you sorry for what you did to me or are you not? You canceled my 26 year membership. You did that. Well, then who did it? For what reason? You're the only one that ever happened. And you admitted failure, failure, failure. Good job. Good job. Recording it. Nice. Why not? Absolutely. He just, he wants entertainment. So he wants entertainment. You hurt me. Not the first time and you he does will this. sadly have to take that to your time. grave. Huh? I that's choose that's to forgive you here. for the and hurt and the cause of yeah. all the pain yeah. to me and my family. I hope you don't hurt any other people in this okay. world with your behavior. Okay. Enough. Hurt, pain, my family. This must be a dire situation where someone's, it's, their life is hanging in the balance. It must be that. Let me look at the headline. Male Karen live it over a AAA membership being canceled. Okay. The surgeons are not standing by in the operating room. They're not. Okay. I look, if you can believe it, there's more. If you want to hit me, hit me, buddy. If you want to do something to me, do it, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. I forgive you for hurting me. You hurt me. It's because you're white. Tell them. That's what he wants to hear, right? She realizes that she screwed up. She realizes that she hurt me. He already me. said it several times. I don't recommend you touching him. You're good. I'm just saying. If you touch him, you're allowed to touch him. So, is this the representative that you have here? I have a home. All right. I don't have one. You're going to record me, I'll record you. Okay. Oh, you're perfect. This is going to go. I know you want everything to calm down, but he's brought everybody into it. You brought everybody into it. This guy right here has called me drunk. So I'm going to get my car, I'm going to call the police, or I'm going to have a DUI on me now. Get an Uber. I'm drunk. Get an Uber. Get an Uber. Now, to those who want to point to a man's faith, in the middle of this turmoil, this chaos, undoubtedly caused by him, he does offer forgiveness on the spot. I don't know what he's forgiving her for, but he, well, he did say, my family, my family, hurting us, hurting me. Um, but you just can't do this in a public establishment. You can't do this and expect that the cops aren't going to come and they'll say, would well, they come? You, what, you know what could happen. Little tase, little spray, worse. You got to, once the cops get called, something has to happen. Let's watch. This guy right here. Okay. Well, he left it. Problem solved. Never okay. mind. Was there any type of. Nope, nothing. He's good. He was just verbally was screaming. Right but... Who's the guy? No, nah, I don't. I don't. He's. Who's the one that called? Inside. I understand, sir. Who called? Inside. So okay. they called inside, but he's. Okay. Did uh, any aggression? Nothing. nothing. No, he's just about. screaming. Okay. He's just right screaming. Now? Okay. What was he screaming? Right now, that's Thank extra. You, sir. That's all extra. He just was mad at AAA, but they called because they were scared. But he's out of here. Okay. That's it. Got his seatbelt on. He's leaving, right? I'm sorry. I was going to ask the team. It's a wonderful crack investigative team here at Indisputable. If there's a part two, where's the part where they go chase this Karen down and there's something filed? 
or beat down something. Again, I don't want the violence. I'm just saying when the cops show up, you know what happened. Unfortunately, nothing in this case, as you saw, the male Karen just uh, leaves. I, it's unclear the when, the where of this incident, but what can be gathered clearly from the footage is the male Karen is outraged. His AAA membership was allegedly canceled by a woman at the front desk. Additionally, the man in the gingham button down also alleges the male Karen routinely harasses the woman. The man in the polo even accuses the male Karen of being drunk. I don't understand uh, Mayor behaving in this outlandish manner, attacking the woman who, I don't know, people make mistakes, okay? I would do it deliberately if that showed up at my kiosk. It's deliberate. Membership gone, sorry, okay? But it is telling to me that there's this outlandish reaction for a AAA membership. Sure, it has its privileges, but really? What's next? Someone eats a bag of Funyuns and he freaks out over that? I want you to take it, Mayor, but I'm going to leave it like this. I could not help but to think if I were Karen, what animal would I be? And it dawned on me, a skunk. I'd be a skunk because what Karens do is they, they missed their functified odor throughout an area. They tag people with it and you can't wash it off. You just, it has to fade. Right? You cannot get rid of the stench of this behavior. And then they just scurry off. Like this milk Karen did, Mayor. Yeah, and here, here's the difference in, in being, this is what I'm talking about, systemic racism. There's this huge ally for this man at the door. He's not even the person that called the police. He's doing all the baiting. He's gone now, don't worry about it. Nothing happened, there was no aggression. The video was all about aggression. It's how you see it. He can scream in this woman's face about what she's going to take to the grave with her, the wrong that she's done him. Yet and still, that's not aggressive. Now, here's here's the telling part. The gentleman said, "You smell." Like, he smelled like alcohol. He said, you're going to call the police and I'm going to get a DUI. You don't get a DUI unless you're drunk. Even if you're forced to take a breathalyzer test, you're not going to get a DUI unless you're drunk. So this idea... This idea that he kind of like told on himself that maybe I'm going to get the UI because I'm drunk. Maybe it has something to do with it. But I would I go a step further and say uh, that I, the police officer allowing him to leave when he was pointed yes. out as an aggressor is something that we don't see happening when people are black. And what we're saying is, what we're saying is, like you said, we're not looking for the violence towards uh, other people. What we're saying is we don't get this level of policing. We see it exuberant uh, often against and for white people. We've seen white women in Phoenix hit cops, keep on aggressively attacking them, off duty police officers drunk, belligerent, being belligerent to cops and walking away, going home. Whereas a black child, six year old, is tackled. This idea that Tamir Rice was killed when a police officer hopped out of a car and the car was still moving and he was 12. And this police officer four or five years later went to another state and became another police officer. Does yeah. not happen for us. We we're not awarded this idea that we can go into somewhere and scream about our membership. Not even if it's a membership, not just a triple A. If it's a membership in Christ family, we saw that in South Carolina, people were praying, screaming about their Lord for the their love of the Lord, and were still murdered. So this idea of white supremacy and whiteness, whiteness that exists in America is on display every time we see white people walk past police officers after they've caused a disturbance. Uh, so, you know, the I, even the idea that you can't stop this man and say, hey, you if you come back here, you're trespassing. That was not even, that was even taken away because the officer just listened to this other defender of this person and said, you know what, his whiteness trumps whatever he's done. Please let him go. He has his seatbelt on. Systemic racism means you might get Burger King after committing the offense. Systemic racism means the police are going to treat you with care and they may even flag down your neighbor to drive your vehicle home, okay? Going out of their way to treat you better than you deserve, often like a human, while somebody else who has caramel deep chocolate tones to their skin. Can be humiliated, injured, 
beaten, killed for less. Let's not, that would not have gone on and on and on, okay? That scene would have been cut long time before if that were a black man. And long before the police arrived, other good Samaritans would have brought him to bear. How I see it. It's just how I see it. I'll give you the last word, Mayor. I mean, at this point, you know, we 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 have to say science that science is something is good in science when it can be duplicated over and over again. It's not an outlier at that point. This theory may be maybe some truth to this theory, scientifically true. What we have to do is say that caring behavior in America is not outlier behavior. Uh, this is this is regular behavior. It is it is this and also the forgiving of this, the, the uncancelable nature of whiteness uh, in America is just devastating, devastating. And what we saw right now is small and it looked like champagne problems. But this woman is at work doing her job and cannot leave or just experience her shift without this level of attack. And for the, for this not to be the first time means somebody in her chain of command should have already said this guy cannot come back in the store. Can't cancel whiteness. Can't cancel whiteness. You can't. And you're, you're, it's a birthright, okay? You can't ever get rid of it, the privilege, the promise, your destiny, if you will. That's what we saw. Two Karens, one plus one Karen equals huh? privilege. We're right back. This is Indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Mayor Mondale Robinson joins us, Enfield, North Carolina's finest. And we do appreciate you. Stay with us. The suspected white supremacist gets lenient sentence. It's what we do, folks. Right? Some crimes are worth more ire than others. 63-year-old David Allen Emanuel, Florida man who tried to run over six black men after spewing racist slurs at the group, sentenced to just 12 months plus one day in federal prison. That was on Thursday. Reportedly, this is far less time than what the Justice Department pursued. I would think you're dangerous. Tried to run over six people. And hate, racism was your motivating factor. Manuel was sentenced on six counts of hate crimes after attempting to run over Marvin Dunn, his son, and four other black men, September 6, 2022. Department of Justice wanted a more substantial prison term of between five and six years behind bars. Manuel still has to face a state charge where he has been indicted on a count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without, without intent to kill. Manuel retired clam farmer, Levy County, North Central Florida, must surrender to report to prison no later than noon, January 2nd, the judge said. He was also ordered to serve two years of supervised release after he finishes his prison term. Fresh take Florida with the details here. Dunn, who is a Florida historian, and the other black men were surveying Dunn's Rosewood property, scouting land to build a memorial for the 1923 Rosewood Massacre. Enlightening educating, preserving history, marking the spot. That's what they did to deserve this. Rosewood Massacre was a racially motivated massacre of black people and the destruction of a black town that took place during the first week of January, 1923 in rural Levy County, Florida. At least six black people were killed, but eyewitness accounts suggested a higher death toll of 27 to 150. We'll go with that. If you know anything about America's dance with racism and killing. Details of the incident, according to DOJ evidence during the July 26th trial, proved that after Emanuel found the men surveying land, he shouted racial slurs, expletives at them, including effing N, telling the men to get out of these woods before driving a pickup truck directly at the group, nearly striking one of them. News one filling in the color for us. During the trial, a witness also testified that Emmanuel admitted that he came at those expletives and that he would have 
expletive up all those black expletives. Another witness testified that the defendant came within inches of striking one of the victims and that one victim nearly lost his life that day. Although sentencing seemed light for a man charged with six counts of hate crimes, the DOJ stressed in a press release that there was no place for racially motivated hate crimes in America. News one again, that's not true. That's not true. What was in the press release? There's a place. And we've seen it too many times, haven't we? Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark of the Justice Department Civil Rights Division said, racially motivated hate crimes run contrary to our values as Americans and simply have no place in our society today. I like the work she's doing. That's not true. And I apologize. I like the work she's doing. But I think truth at all times is warranted in these times particularly. America's born on racism, right? We've been stewing, it's just been brewing and stewing in a slow crock pot cooker of it since the beginning. But I'll read the statement. This defendant violently and callously sought to strike a group of black men with his truck because of their race. As we mark 100 years since the horrific 1923 Rosewood massacre, the Justice Department stands resolute in its commitment to holding accountable those who commit violent, racially motivated hate crimes in our country. Special agent in charge, Sherry E. Onks of the FBI Jacksonville field office also condemned the racist attack, quoting, no one should ever fear they could be targeted in an act of violence based on how they look, where they're from, or any part of their identity. Hate crimes are not only an attack on the victim, they are meant to threaten and intimidate an entire community. And because of their wide ranging impact, we will continue to work to seek justice for victims and their communities. In a letter submitted last week to the judge, Dunn asked the court to show Emanuel mercy during sentencing, which could have helped lead to his lenient sentence. For me, my faith requires forgiveness, and so I must, Dunn wrote. Race is the thorn in our collective side, the unmovable rock in our common path. For America to become whole, the thorns and rocks must be removed. The victims in this case are hopeful that in our plea for mercy for Mr. Emanuel and his family, we're taking an important step toward the goal of removing these obstacles to healing. Despite Dunn's request for leniency, Emanuel himself expressed little remorse for his actions. I didn't do a goddamn thing. Get treated like this mm, over an effing N man. I didn't do a damn thing. Son of a B. I should have run them MS, noted federal prosecutors during the trial. There's a lot going on here, Mayor. I try to respect those who are the focus of such an devious, disgusting, violent act. And their decision to handle it as they see fit, that's over here. I cannot see a man who, and we don't know which one of the six black people could have lost their lives. It sounds like all of them were in jeopardy. But one of them, Mr. Dunn, had a son there, just like the old days, right, in America. This is what you're reduced to. This is what you're labeled. And I am on the other side. Black people who are sick of the slow singing and flower bringing, the beautiful church goers, South Carolina who prayed and before they were blown away, spoke kindness and love and forgiveness to their murderous, racist attacker who actually consumed a burger, a flame broiled burger afterwards. That's America. And if I were on the bench, I'll never be. I would have respected this victim's letter, his stance, Mr. Dunn. Wanting forgiveness, but to me, Mayor, forgiveness comes 
in different forms. You can do the time, let it marinate, which it sounds like is necessary here, and lose something more than one year or 85, 90% he'll serve, Mayor. But that's just me. I want to hear you pontificate on this one. Yeah, I think the idea um, that this this Mr. Don, um, who who wrote this letter on behalf of whoever mm, thinks this is a crime against him, I think he misunderstands where we find ourselves in black bodies in these United States. This is not a crime against him. The we heard the FBI agent who was investigating saying the intent of this crime is to invoke fear and terror in everyone, i.e., it's a terrorist act. Therefore. He does not have a say on apology solely. This is what I tell people who try to tell us about protesting when families of murdered ones say, well, you guys shouldn't be protesting. You don't get to name that because this is a collective hurt. This is a crime against all of black humanity when it happens in this manner. Rosewood, the history of Rosewood does not belong to the folk solely, the 200 families of people that live there. It was about all of us. It was about blackness, just like this story. And we saw that in the in this man's response, effing inward, this, that, and the third. Here's, 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 here's the problem with these Christians who, who espouse this idea of forgiveness. There was no blind forgiveness from Jesus. If you are a follower of Jesus, please remember that this is a man of different violence. Jesus wasn't physically violent, but he was violent often, righteous indignation. He overturned the money tables when people, when poor people were being done wrong. We don't do that in this country. We're not overturning the system that, oh, that are doing poor people wrong. We, he cursed, he called Peter and he called him Satan. And that's the worst curse word you can call a Christian, in, especially when it's coming from Jesus. So he cursed the fig tree. He cursed, he, cur- he cast animals. So I, I think people think saying, I forgive you, and that's enough. No, we need accountability for racism. It is a thorn in the side, not the fact that someone is being punished and you let them go unpunished. That is childish. That is not accountability. That is not Christian love. Christian love requires discipline. Spare the rod ruined the child. Spare the rod ruined the races. And amen. And now you've given us a historical, biblical lesson. Again, it matters here. Now, I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more why certain people can do such horrific things, show no remorse, and be gifted with something they did not earn. To live, breathe sooner, to do it all over again. That's what will happen. And by the way, you're right. It is a crime against all of us with that certain skin tone, not born with white privilege. But I'll submit to people who think it's just a black problem because we've seen this before. Had there been a couple of white friends or allies with that group in the woods that day, they would have got it too for loving those expletives, just my thought. Let's go to a GameStop worker who shot a black college student. Derek Guerrero, GameStop assistant manager who fatally shot Chad Drick Coates, a 21 year old Florida Memorial University sophomore, he suspected was shoplifting. Now wants forgiveness from the young man's family. The family members of the deceased say, well, you know what? We want justice. We want justice. Split second decision has forever changed. Retired Marine Derek Guerrero's life. I can think of somebody else's life first that was changed by that split second decision. Tuesday, October 17th, while on his shift at the popular video game store in Pembroke Pines, Florida. 33-year-old suspected someone was stealing from the store. The store worker confronted the person, which led to the two fighting. Lena Blackstar. Boats allegedly ran out of the store with $500 worth of ultra premium Pokemon trading cards. Police say Guerrero pulled his firearm from his waistband and fired it in the student's direction. The store employee shot one bullet, wounding Coats severely in his torso. 
because that's how game stop assistant managers are trained, pull their weapon and fire. Okay. Pembroke Pines Police Department was called to the scene by Coates' girlfriend. Guerrero was arrested, charged with manslaughter. The worker believed he was protecting the store over life. While Florida is a stand your ground state, the law does not allow for someone to use deadly force simply to protect property. Police said in a release on Facebook at no time did the victim threaten Guerrero or display any type of weapon. Adding the victim was transported to a nearby hospital where he died as a result of his injuries. Remorse over the incident. Now, hmm. assistant manager posted a $25,000 bond Thursday, October 19th, telling NBC Miami, I'm really sorry for the family. I didn't mean for any of this to happen to the family. It wasn't my intention. The court said the man was so overwhelmed, all he could do as he waited for his ride to take him home to his wife and his two daughters was place his head in his hands and repeat, I'm extremely sorry for the family. I have so much to say about the point of view here, but I'll keep going first, I, if I can, if I can. Who wrote this, okay? The details are from Atlanta Black Star, but the original reporting, I was in this business and I would have flagged it from the inside. Let's give you some background on Guerrero. For this incident, Guerrero served 10 years in the Marine Corps. Learning more about him, so much to learn, so many redeeming qualities. While in the military, he achieved the rank of sergeant. According to his legal team, he received an honorable discharge and took a job at GameStop to support his family. Thank you for his resume. What a great guy. Police explained that Guerrero had obtained a gun because he had been robbed. Thank you for explaining the perp. And why the perp had a weapon. Police, I thank you for that. He'd been robbed at the store a month earlier. He intended to protect himself from potential future robberies. You mean even when the alleged robber's running away? He reacted hastily, believing that Coates' theft justified the use of the firearm. GameStop has yet to make a public statement regarding the shooting. Now you see that here, I'm incensed because I know these reporters who mean well, but don't have the life experience. And they could be 80 and not have the life experience writing some nonsense like that from the point of view of a killer. He may not be adjudicated a murderer yet, but he's a killer of a young person who may have stolen some things, may have stolen some things. And yet we know all about the perp's redeeming qualities. The story should have been written from the moment this young man left his home with his girlfriend and entered the store. Not from the point of view of the killer. That's first off, okay? That's first. The other thing that I think, Mayor, has to be pointed out here is we've done too many stories with the stand your ground law in Florida. Didn't seem to fit this. But a white person hasn't been charged. I think in this case, too, the name Guerrero, apparently white Hispanic. Latino means something. You're going to be charged, but we're still going to explain and we're still going to couch it and we're still going to grant you some privilege here. I'm disgusted by the details of this story and the point of view it was written in. It is the heart of the matter. It is an indoctrination. Media is so powerful. It is an indoctrination of all of us about who you value and who you don't. I'd like to know more about the dead kid, but that's just me, Mayor. I'm incensed. 
Yeah, I, I, I um, I was looking down even at the lower, the, the lower third, and it said game worker, or game stop worker shoots, and I was like, why doesn't it say kill? We don't know murder is a is a, is a criminal term, but kill is a real thing. I, I'm I'm a little frustrated with the article. This idea that they're trying to use uh, marine as a as a as a badge of honor, when in actuality, what they should say they should have explained that terms. We America trained this killer to kill and see black bodies as 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 the enemies, and we know that to be true because if you look at what happens with veterans, uh, they were overrepresented in January 6th insurrection. Is one in five of of those people arrested were veterans. So let's let's talk about the negativeness, the negativeness that goes that should be associated with being an American veteran. We should talk about how racist the military is. And I can speak from this space as a Marine Corps veteran. There's no pride in in using that 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 label to take away the fact that this person just killed an American citizen for nothing. There's never a case where anything in GameStop is worth the life of someone. This idea that we we learned how sad he was with his head with his head hung. I don't want to hear about any of that. You are tampering with witnesses at this point. You are you are you are sullying the jury pool, even telling me that he's a veteran trying to evoke some kind of pride in this country or honor in this man who just killed someone and is going people. back to his family and he's and going his back kids. to his family. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I think and I think this is this is the this is another uh, example of America's. Toll tolerance for black suffering. Uh, the idea that this story written in the Atlanta Black Star in this context was almost disgusting for me. And when you were reading it, I was taken aback. It's it's yeah. damn for a shame. And I smell where it came from. And I worked in Miami too. And I predict these charges will be dismissed. There will be something worked out. There will be empathy all around. And I'm disgusted by the police. As they explained, the hell are you explaining this for? Aren't you the popo? Why are you explaining when this kid's dead over GameStop? Allegedly, allegedly, okay, stolen merchandise. He had obtained a gun because, you know, he'd been robbed at the store a month earlier. I got a hundred million horror stories that nobody listened to. When a black man said it, this is indisputable. We're right back. Welcome back to Indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed alongside the Honorable Mayor Mondale Robinson, Enfield, North Carolina, as our special guest co host. A lot of you uh, speaking out big time. TYT member Biden flavor corn pop, very active today. We appreciate you, corn pop. Lest the US gets the kind of anti hate speech activity laws Germany has, America will never get these goons under control. You don't reason with riffraff, you round them up, dump them in the fish tank for a few years. About the GameStop shooting, you killed this kid over Pokemon cards. Librio, why yes? And even law enforcement is making excuses. For it. And the media is aiding in the defense as well. Switch, white supremacist gets a slap on the wrist. Jasper Katz 0407 says, I didn't do a damn thing, proceeds to admit guilt. Even when you admit guilt and say, I have no remorse, I should have done more, I should have murdered these. Mm-mm. Okay, you're still inside of to leniency. Well, it's a birthright. America, look at your life. Might want to look at your life. And I can say that because it's my country too. Okay, before you tell me to leave it, I'm allowed to say that. I'm allowed to want her to be better, more dignified than this. Ricky Smiley, distraught, unable to see. Granddaughter. Ricky Smiley is feeling the weight of seasonal depression. But the entertainer also has been mourning the tragic loss of his firstborn child, Brandon Smiley, since January, as well as the pain of being estranged from his son's three year old daughter, Storm. Ricky wrote in an ex post on October 20th, ahead of a show in Columbus, Ohio. 
Changing of the season is triggering sadness, anger, despair, confusion, complication, hurt, irritation, pain, grief, worry, paranoia, pressure, distance, spiritual warfare. Just some of what I'm feeling. Ricky continued, I miss my son. And I keep dreaming about my granddaughter. It's tearing me apart. I miss my consistent, loving, and genuine grandparents who've gone on to be with God. No one on this earth would understand but them. Morning radio show host opened up in the past months about his fight to gain grandparents' rights to ensure he and his family continue to nurture their relationship with the three-year-old. Lena Black star with the details here. In an April Instagram Live, Ricky claimed his last time seeing Storm was at Brandon's February homegoing service. He said he made several attempts to contact the child's mother to schedule meetings and invited them both to a family Easter gathering. His requests were allegedly ignored, forcing the comic to pursue legal intervention. He also divulged that Brandon and Storm's mother shared a rocky relationship and that The aspiring entertainer also endured obstacles to gain access to his only child. You're hurting her. You're hurting her. The best thing ever happened to me was having my grandparents around and just having wonderful grandparents, said Ricky in the live session. In four short months, the Friday after next actor will mark a year since he laid his son to rest. 32-year-old tragically passed away in January, reportedly from fentanyl and alcohol toxicity. For years, he struggled with addiction. The milestone could also mark a year of estrangement for Ricky and Storm. Jesus. Elsewhere in this emotional post, Ricky wrote, can't even go to the cemetery to visit my grandma's grave because Brandon is buried next to her. Bad mistake on my end to do that, so I'm stuck as far as that just ain't going. Even though his own sorrow, Ricky wished, though, through his sorrow, he wished love and happiness to his fans, promised that he would still show up for a scheduled performance. The BET Comic View alum also has three other children. And for many others, he has served as a father figure, Atlanta Black Star filling in. The details, Mayor, my heart breaks for him and for if we're to believe everything that he has detailed. A little girl probably misses Grandpa too. This is um this is a extremely uh, touching story because as a grandparent, I mean, I'm I'm not a parent or grandparent, but just realizing that. These you could just snatch your child away from the grandparents without any repercussions, and I think that is that is a that is a that is a serious thing. And if we care about people as they age, then this is something we should also be obligated. We want to make sure that we protect this vulnerable population. And I'm not saying that uh, Ricky Smiley, who has access more access to most people, are vulnerable, but he's not the only grandparent probably caught up in between uh, a, a bad situation or losing access to their grandchildren when they shouldn't. Um, and I think that is that is um, it's a touchy situation. I, and I I first met Ricky Smiley in in a freak moment, and I, I call it freak because I would have met him if he would have did what every other famous person at the time had done back when Jenna Six happened. Uh, all of the cameras, all of the people rolled out there um, when 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 all of the national media was there, uh, screaming, acting as if they were the head of the protest, all of the march for people that who came from all over to go to Jenna, Louisiana, about what was happening, the nooses and the trees and whatever. But as soon as national media pulled out, most of the famous people pulled out, and I'll call their names. Uh, Michael Blacks, Michael uh, Blazden, uh, D.L. Hughley, um, um, and all of those guys just left. Ricky Smiley literally, literally, even when the crowds was following the famous people, stood in front of the police officers, crying and screaming, demanding that they free those six people, let those black bodies out because they had done nothing wrong, and refused to to the point where he was almost locked up himself uh, because he would not 
move out front of the police station, even when they were trying to push and create a line to push him back. He stood there. So I, I, I see that compassion for people that are not even related to him. I can't even imagine what he's going through. And the fact that you can't grieve properly or go visit with the people that you think can relate the most to your grandparents because you got to be reminded of this new wound where you're, you lost your own seed is, is, is a damning situation for that brother to be in. And my, my prayers are up for sure. Yeah, I, um, I haven't met Ricky, but this first person account that you've related is one I've been treated to before. This is who this man is. And a lot of times when you are in front of the public as much as Ricky is on the air every day for hours, you can't hide it. Not the movies. It's real. And uh, I pray grandparents should not usurp parental rights. But that's not what we're talking about here. Children heal. And if you can figure it out, even if you don't get along with the other side, I can't imagine doing that to somebody. You don't have to like them. It's not your granddaddy. I think about the kids. So we'll keep following it. Uh, it's a question. What in the red state? Hail. You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face. It's not hard. Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. Jamaican dad versus black bear. Excuse me, you live here? <laughs> take a, can we can bring a camera? Take a picture of him. Take a picture of him. Look at him. You know what the whole I'm a seed. You see, see them that they don't pull down up here. They don't wake up with things and can't come up. It is the kind of thing that instant replay is likely required for this a Jamaican dad. Well, you saw it there with a club scaring off a black bear. And here we see it again. Nerves of steel of this dad, certainly on display. Angry that the bear was, well, obstructing, taking, messing up what didn't belong to the bear. Somewhere the rapper mystical must be smiling. <laughs> it must be. I can see. Flash and a smile and some ice. Okay, because this is another real one. The rapper once said, quote, you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear? You know, help the bear. Okay. Is that, let me just make that clear. Help the bear. Mayor, uh, normally I'd ask the question, is this foolish or fair? But I'm not going to do that in this case because this dad could handle himself proper like. Excuse me, do you live here? <laughs> he asked the bear a question, politely <laughs> aggressive. Excuse me, do you live here? Like, get upon my best. I love it. I love it. I love it. whenever Jamaicans are angry, I'm, I'm already tuned in. So the fact that he was showing his anger at a bear was wonderful. I just wish. For some reason, some uh, Buju Buntown was playing in the background. I oh. could have been like, book, 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 or something. It was well, you just get, get with TikTok. It'll, it'll be remixed, Mayor. Okay, a real something like that. Uh, before we get out of here, real quick, I want to know a prediction. Does the bear come back there? He'll be back. Oh, okay, round two. Okay, keep your cameras handy. Where can people find you, Mayor? Mundo Robinson everywhere on all social media platforms. But please check me out on Rebel HQ. You certainly will. Appreciate your wisdom. Appreciate your historical lessons, biblical lessons. We appreciate everything. This is indisputable. I'm Sharon Reed in for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. We'll see you again.